it's Jessie and welcome to my channel Jessie Shelf. If you're new here I'm so happy you stopped by. This is a space where I talk about books, tea, and sometimes my dogs make an appearance and if you're a touring subscriber I really appreciate you coming back and watching my crazy videos because I'm a little bit of a hot mess as I adjust my clothing and my glasses here in this video. Getting to the video though, um, today we're going to talk about all the books I read in January of 2021. Wrap up's going up a little bit later than I like, but you know, 2021, we're not being hard on ourselves. Life gets in the way, work gets in the way, the pandemic gets in the way, you know, whatever. Okay, so I'm really proud of myself though. I had a really good kickoff to my reading in 2021. I read a total of 12 things, some ebooks, some audiobooks, ton of physical books. I have ratings all across the board, which is really exciting. I feel like I found some of my favorite books this month and I'm gonna share them with you right now. So we're gonna talk about the ebooks, audiobooks, then the physical books. I'll have like little linky taggy things down below if I can figure out how to do that. And I'm gonna talk about them in um, rating from lowest to highest. So we're gonna be saving the best for last. So let's start out with the ebooks. Okay, um, I read two this month. The first one being Sour Candy. Um, if your name is Trisha Polkinghorn, please like go by this part. <laughs> of this video unless Trish you want to know what I rated it. So I read this for a little project I'm doing. I'm reading my book besties least favorite and favorite books um, of 2020 and this is my friend Trish's. Um, this is one of her least books of 2020. It's a little ebook and uh, it's probably gonna be one of my least book favorite books of 2020. Um, I gave it a two out of five stars. Um, this is a horror novel. I can't really tell you what it was about because I really don't know. It was really creepy and weird and really not up my alley and I mean it was written well and that's why it got a two. It was kind of about this kid who ate a bunch of candy and became like a really weird psycho and there was a man and he like became his daddy and I don't know. You can watch the vlog when the vlog goes up because yeah this was a strange one. It was weird and totally out of my comfort zone. So yeah, a no go for that. The other ebook I read was Wrath by Rebecca With Weatherspoon actually. Um, and I gave this a four out of five stars. I really, really enjoyed this. This was for the currently reading book club. This is actually the February pick. I read it a little bit early. Um, again, an ebook, uh, a really great read, a very steamy read, but a very cutesy romancy read um, about a buff male nanny. Like, a male nanny, a hot male nanny, you've got a diverse set of characters as well and it touches on some like tougher topics. Mm -hmm. um, you've got a single mom who's a doctor with two little girls and she's a total badass and it was great. I really really liked this and I'm gonna be reading more Rebecca Weatherspoon for sure. On to the audiobooks, I had a little better luck with some of the ratings. Um, the first one being A Beautiful Terrible Thing by Jen Wild, I believe it is, or something like that. Um, I gave this book a 3 out of 5 stars. It was a memoir, the author's story, basically about her husband le leading a double life. That's the gist of it. Um, she had a baby and her husband basically had a girlfriend on the side and led a double life. Um, it was interesting. It was really interesting to read. It was really heartbreaking to read. I can't imagine going through that. Um, but the ending got really, really repetitive. And um, yeah, it was it was just okay. I don't know if this book deserved like a full out memoir. Of course, like I'm not judging anybody's life and I do that all the time when I read memoirs and nonfiction books. It's very hard to put a rating on them, but it's all about my enjoyment. And this, my enjoyment for this was like in the middle. Um, I appreciated hearing about the story and um, kind of the craziness of it all and how this happens to men, women, anyone. But uh, yeah, the ending just got really, really, really repetitive. Um, and it was, it was just okay. So a three out of five. Okay, so the next audiobook I read was my first five-star read of the year, and this is definitely going to be one of my favorite books of 2021, but it's All Boys Aren't Blue by George M. Johnson. Oh my god, I loved listening to this. George M. Johnson also narrates it, and it is his life story about growing up as black and queer, and it's full of different essays about his life, and it was just so raw and... 
It was so good. I loved listening to this so much. It really, it touched on a lot of subjects that I don't think about um, a lot either because I am white and I am not queer, I am straight cisgendered um so it was just really good to listen to this and read this and just hear about George's life he is a LGBTQIA plus activist and he just makes some really good points about queer people and black people and I enjoyed this so so much I'm gonna be looking out for his next books um if he writes any and I would definitely definitely listen to this guys this was so so good um I was crying at times I was laughing at times and that to me is an excellent memoir so definitely check this out if you haven't already all right, so now for the physical books, we're going to start off low. Um, Misery by Stephen King. going to say this right now. I gave this a 2.5 out of 5 stars. I did not really enjoy this. I enjoyed the whole idea and the concept of this creepy story. Basically, you are following a writer named Paul. He writes these famous books um, about a character named Misery, and one of his fans finds him um, in a car accident and captures him and then holds him, held him, holds him prisoner <laughs> and makes him write the next book. Um, it, what the hell was her name? Annie. Annie is a sick, twisted fuck. Um, and, um, you will find that out in this book. My biggest problem was I don't think this was actually written well. I know Stephen King fans are gonna come after me. Um, I think it was very, very long and I found myself to be very, very bored at times. Um, I just kept reading because I wanted to know if Paul made it through this ordeal or not. But yeah, definitely a miss for me. Stephen King, I've only read two novels so far. This and Carrie. Loved Carrie. Didn't like this. So... He might be one of those authors for me where I like some work and I don't. So, yeah. S sorry, not sorry. Misery wasn't for me. Getting slightly higher on this list, I have Heartbones by Colleen Hoover. I gave this a 3.5 out of 5 stars. I buddy read this with my friend Trish. It was our first buddy read of the year. And it was okay. Um, the writing in this book is really, really mediocre compared to Colleen Hoover's other books. Um, I know she self-publishes now, and I kind of wonder, like, if she needs a better editor. I don't know. I don't know anything really about self-publishing, if you edit your own books or hire someone, but I just found the writing in here very, very mediocre. The story was there. It's about what Bea, um, and she comes from this really rough upbringing. Her mom's an addict and they've lived in poverty her whole life. She goes to live with her rich father and she meets a guy. You know probably the rest of the story, but it was good. It was a fun buddy read with Trish and it was definitely a quick read. So if you're looking for a quick read with a book that kind of packs a punch, um, pick this one up for sure. Next up, I've got a book I did a whole vlog on. I will link it down below, but it is Ties That Tether by Jane Agora. I did this for um, a series on my channel called Booktube Finds, um, and I explain Booktube Finds all in that video, so check it out. I'd really appreciate it. Um, I gave this 3.5 out of 5 stars. It was a pretty good romance for me. A 3.5 is a it's a good rating when it comes to a romance. So we're following a girl named Azir or Azir Azire. I'm gonna go with Azir. I'm probably saying it wrong. And she is Nigerian. She lives in Canada though. She immigrated to Canada when she was 12 years old. Her father is no longer with her. Um, and she made this promise to her father that she would not get together with a white man. Um, she would be with a Nigerian man. So, of course, a one-night stand happens with a white guy. And you could probably guess what happens next. Um, you follow um, our main character as she tries to make really tough decisions. I enjoyed this. I really, really did. Um, there were just some parts that were kind of boring at times. And I didn't really like the um, male lead character that our main character gets together with, Raphael. He kind of annoyed me at times, but check out my vlog if you want to know more of my thoughts on that. Now we're moving up into my higher rated books of the month, the first one being a four star read, and it is The Poppy War. I feel like everyone and their mother has read this book except me, and I'm just now getting into it. What a different fantasy novel. How do I even explain this? We're following a girl named Ren and she is an orphan, a war orphan. 
um, and she gets accepted into this really special school to kind of, I kind of see it as being a soldier, but I'm probably wrong, and then a war breaks out. And you're following this group of kind of outcasts who have special powers um, as they navigate this war. And you know what? I don't entirely 100% understand this world yet. And that's why I'm having a hard time explaining it. Um, this was like a really heavy read for me. Um, it was a super gory war book too. I will just put that out there. Trigger warnings for like lots of violence um, and rape as well. Um, but it was way out of my comfort zone. I'm not like a war person reader. Um, but I like this. I really did. Maybe probably because of the fantasy element. So I'm going to continue on with this series. Um, I never wanted to stop reading the book. Uh, there were some parts that lagged for me, and like I said, I don't think I fully understand the world, but this is brilliant. This is a really brilliant fantasy novel, and I can't wait to read the next ones. My next book was actually my first book of the year. I gave it 4.5 out of 5 stars, so it was a great way to start 2021, and that is Empire of Wild by Cherry Dimaline. Um, this is a Canadian author, a Canadian Métis author actually, and I really wanted to start out 2021 with a Canadian book, so woohoo. Um, so this was such an interesting and fun and rich story. We're following a woman named Joan and her husband Victor has gone missing. She cannot find him. Um, they are a Métis couple living on the Georgian Bay, which is not really close to where I live, but it's in the same province, so it was kind of fun to read about that. I really like reading books about Canada because I've been to quite a few places, so it's like I can kind of picture them. So Joan and Victor are a Métis couple. Um, Victor has gone missing, and one day Joan, she's very hungover, she's in a Walmart parking lot. Um, there's this group, like this kind of church group, they're kind of like a cult in my opinion. Um, they're set up in the parking lot with a tent, and she goes and checks it out, and then she hears her husband's voice, and she's like, oh my god, Victor, but he's not Victor, he's actually a reverend. Um, he's going by Reverend Eugene Wolfe, and Joan takes it upon herself to remind Victor of his life before. It's inspired by like the story of the Rogaru, Rogaro, um, and it's a were werewolf-like creature that haunts the roads and woods of Métis communities. Um, it's an actually really, really interesting story. Please go look that up. Like as I was reading this, I was looking up stuff about Rogarus, and um, not gonna lie scared me a little bit, but it was super cool to look that up and then read this book and go, uh-huh, uh-huh, and make the connections. So I would recommend this book a lot. Um, Cherry Dimaline is a great author. She wrote The Marrow Thieves, and um, her books have never disappointed me at all. The next book I also gave 4.5 out of 5 stars, and that is The Wife Upstairs by Rachel Hawkins. This was my first new release of 2021, like my first 2021 book. Um, my buddy read this with my good friend Trish and my good friend Sophie, and this is also uh, the book troops pick for the month of January as well. And started off strong with that book club. I'll link Gabby's book club down below actually, because like I said, 4.5 out of 5 stars. So. This was fun. This was a fun read. It's not the most brilliant thriller I've ever read in my life, but again, I never wanted to stop reading it. So we're f following Jane in this book, and she's a dog walker in a really, really rich kind of suburb of a city, and she starts to kind of become friends with a man whose wife is missing, and she ends up getting into a romantic re relationship with him and things aren't always what they seem. That's all I'm gonna say. It's so hard to explain thrillers because you don't want to give anything away, but I would definitely check this out for new releases of 2021. It was a it was a good thriller. It, I, I enjoyed it. So my next two books I loved so, so much. I gave them both five stars. These are going to be some of my favorite books of the year. First, I want to talk about Michigan vs. The Boys by Carrie S. Allen. Oh my god. Okay, so if you're going to read a book this year, read this. This was so good. Um, this is about a young girl named Michigan. She's in her senior year of high school, and the girl's hockey team gets cut. Um, and Michigan is devastated because she loves hockey. Um, so she decides to try out for the boys team. Um, and of course, the boys aren't happy about it. The hazing starts. 
and the hazing gets taken too far. Um, trigger warnings for rape, bullying, alcohol, abuse, um, all of that. <sighs> this book just like touched my soul. I played boys hockey growing up and you know what guys, I think I'm gonna re do a review of this book so I won't like tell you too much about why this book touched my soul and means so much to me but I played boys hockey growing up my experience was not like the main characters at all I actually had a really hard experience playing girls hockey when I switched over but this book just gave me a lot of nostalgia of being on a girl sorry being a girl on a boys hockey team just you know getting ready in teeny tiny janitor closets and having to prove yourself more and people being like oh my god you play boys hockey and just also, the friendships in this book really remind me of the girls I played hockey with that were also on the boys hockey team. And this book just brought me back to a time in my life that um, I go back to a lot when I want to feel nostalgia and want to feel happy. So stay tuned for a review because I think this book definitely um, is worth reviewing for my channel. Alright, and the last book I want to talk about is of course another five star read my favorite book of January, going to be one of my favorite books of 2021, and that is Concrete Rose by Angie Thomas. Okay, so this is the prequel to The Hate You Give, and I think that even though this is the prequel, you need to read The Hate You Give before you read this. You need to read The Hate You Give and fall in love with Ma Maverick Carter, Big Marv, Mav, and Lisa. You need to fall in love with the characters before you read this because then you will appreciate Concrete Rose so much. I love this. I flew through this in a day. I could not put it down. I love Maverick Carter and Lisa and this whole family and I loved The Hate You Give and it was just so amazing to see these characters I loved from The Hate You Give in this book and like connecting everything as well like characters from The Hate You Give and Concrete Rose. Um, it was just amazing and it just follows the life of Maverick as he's a teenager um, trying to find his way. Um, his father is in prison. He's part of a gang. Um, he's having troubles with Lisa and it just it's great. Oh, when he's a new father and it was just, I loved it. I loved this book so, so much. Another knockout of the park for Angie Thomas. I will read anything she writes. So amazing. Would highly recommend this after you read The Hate Gift. All right, everybody. And that is all I have to really say about all the books I read and listened to in January of 2021. I had a really good reading month. I mean, we had some duds, but we also had some like amazing books as well that I'm going to be talking about in a 2021 wrap up at the end of the year, I'm sure. So if you guys have read any of these books, please comment down below. I'd love to chat to you in the comments. Let me know your least favorite book of the month and your favorite book of the month. And I will see you guys in my next video. Um, please remember to like and subscribe and happy reading.